Welcome to this month's special series, Seeing, Chosen, and Sent, Having That Spiritual Vision 2020. And I'm excited that you can join us. So chat. Let uh, the team that's volunteering, that's participating, Mashari, we've got Anne and, and Tammy, they're there, available. Let them know uh, that you're joining us this evening. Give them their, uh, your prayer request. Do a shout out. Uh, and connect. That's what we're here for tonight. Well, uh, in this series uh, that we're going to be kicking off and launching tonight, it's about having that spiritual uh, 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 eyes to be able to see as, as God does, not to the outward appearance, but to the person of the heart. And I don't know about you, but he, uh, it is wonderful to know that he sees us. He, he sees our needs. He is alongside us in the pain, in uh, seeing our dreams fulfilled, and he desires for us to um, have every day alive with his presence, to be able to enjoy the adventure that he has for us. But in that adventure, it's having our heart open to have him identify uh, those along our way uh, that we can share a word of encouragement, that we can have compassion and love for. So join us for this adventure. It, uh, buckle in. It's going to be an awesome couple weeks, and I'm so excited you can join us. Heavenly Father, I pray your blessings upon each one watching us uh, tonight. May your spirit just stir and cause just like it was for uh, those mentioned in the gospel that they had eyes to see. Father, may we have your vision. May we see life and people as you see them. You have us here on this earth for a reason. And Lord God, we have decided that we want to be a part of that adventure, that part of life that you have called us to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So tonight we're going to talk about having eyes wide open. Now, I just uh, had a new prescription, and uh, everyone knows in my home, if I don't have the glasses, I am squinting, I'm trying to see, and I can vaguely make out uh, what it is that I'm looking at. Uh, so my first point in this series that's uh, actually encouraged and, and prompted by Ephesians 1.8, open the eyes of their heart in these eyes that are wide open but the first point is this god wants us to watch and see now when we look at things uh we can clearly get an idea of what's out there but when you see something it's kind of like i'm looking for something in the refrigerator and it's and i'll tell my husband where's the milk and he's like, babe, see, it's right there. And often in life, God is wanting our spiritual eyes to awaken that we can not only look and have him uh, reveal the past that he has for us, the, the life that uh, he has prepared for us, but he wants us to see, you know, taste and see that the Lord is good. So he, he wants us to embrace uh, the life that he has, but it's about seeing uh, the purpose and seeing the encounters that he has prepared for us. But when we're so caught up with our needs, our wants, we're not sensitive. We won't be able to see those who he has brought in our path to encourage, to affirm and celebrate. Watch and see, point number one. Luke 7 shares a story of a woman, uh, Mary Magdalene, who had uh, come to this dinner. The Pharisee, Simon, had invited Jesus uh, for this special dinner. And uh, as the special guest, Jesus himself, he was sitting next to the host. And um, here was this woman, of a broken heart she uh, had done things uh, at that time weeping crying coming to, to Jesus with her perfume and and was pouring it forth and, and in these 
tears of, of just uh, repentance, had uh, just surrendered herself to the Lord. Now, historically in that day, that was just inappropriate. And Jesus reaches out to, to Simon to get his attention. And he says in uh, verse 44 of Luke 7, he says, do you see this woman? But Simon didn't see this woman. He didn't even see and perceive that Jesus, who's sitting right next to him, is the Son of God, the, the promised Messiah. And uh, I think, how often are we sitting next to someone or something is happening, but we, we don't see? We, we don't see through God's eyes. And um, often, we don't have that 2020 spiritual vision to be tuned in to what God is wanting to reveal to us. As I said earlier, to taste and see. Now, we know uh, from the Word of God, He encourages us in uh, e Genesis 28, 15, that He watches over us no matter where we go. So here's God. He, he's watching over us. We know from Psalms 32, 8, that He's instructing us in the way that we should go. His eye of counsel, His eyes are over us. He, he's ever there, ever attuned. And what's so wonderful, he's attuned to our needs, and he is providing labors in our path, maybe prompting us to read a scripture or uh, encouraging us to, to uh, join tonight and be a part of this message. And he is wanting to awaken our eyes to see. And tonight, I just feel like God is saying, do you see? Do you see, do you want to see all that I have for you? And in that place of perception, of awakening to the, the plans, to the destiny and, and the purpose that he has for you, that you would have then eyes to see those that are around you. To be able to bring forth that smile, that, that message of hope, because trust me, you know it, I know it, there's despair everywhere, everywhere that's happening, and, and disillusionment everywhere. But we have a Savior. We know the, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. We know the giver of hope, the fulfillment of that hope, and the restorer of the heart that is broken. So as we think about uh, point number two, when we feel hidden in plain sight, when we feel hidden in plain sight, haven't you been there where you've, uh, I go to work events and they seem to gravitate to this person or that person because of their title or position that they hold or maybe, you know, the, the various uh, judge this or you know reverend that and you think oh my gosh nobody sees me and how often have we been affected by that they it's like they're looking right through us they they're not even seeing us as a person there's so focused on you know this person that is expected to come in that they might be standing or talking but it's all their attention's not on you but on who's coming through or coming by next. But we have a Savior who is so attuned to you. And tonight, I just want to encourage you. He knows your thoughts, your heart cry. He knows your desires, your wants. He is attuned to you. You are precious. You are his all in all. And he's a good father. And he wants to grant you good gifts. You know, I remember as my kids were little, uh, often my husband had to travel being in the military and they would act up uncontrollably because they missed their daddy and so did I. And in that uh, place of, of frustration of just wondering, is he gonna make it back? The unknowns, the uncertainty of the danger that he faced weighed on their little hearts. And you know, Life can weigh on our heart too, but we don't have a father that is far away. He is right there with us. 
He has uh, granting us assurance. He's given us a Holy Spirit, right? Who is our comforter, our helper, and our standby. And he's right there to give you the counsel, the strength that you need, to give you just that fortification of the fruit of peace and joy, just, just that assurance that we can stay the course and he's not going to let us down. But when we feel hidden in plain sight, we can be confidently assured that God is there. He sees all and he will not fail or let us down. Um, but as we look, as I said earlier, as we look, we can fall in that same pattern as what others have done to us, where they are looking, but they're not really seeing us. Their attention is somewhere else. And sometimes I look around me and everyone, like at the metro stop, they're all looking at their phones. They're not even looking at the people around them. And I encourage you tonight, lift up your eyes. Look at the people that God has sent across your path. Later this month, we're going to be doing a, a prayer walk and more details to come on that. But that is all about just taking time to look around your community, to pray, and to be strategic in, in what God wants to do. So with our eyes, he reminds us that when you look around, don't look as as everything within you is wanting you to do, is to look at outward appearance, to look at title and position because we know in first samuel god doesn't look to the outside he looks to the heart of the person we know also and we are encouraged by first corinthians 2 9 and 10 where it reminds us that no mere man has ever seen heard or even imagined the wonderful things that god has ready for those that love the lord but how about this but we know, we know about these things because God has sent his spirit to tell us. And that spirit, it searches out. It shows us all of God's deepest secrets. You know what I enjoy? I enjoy getting ready to be with you on Monday night. I enjoy praying and having God just awaken and stir what's going on in your life, in your heart. And in the encounters of people I meet throughout my day or on the phone. You see, when you're in God's presence, when you take the time to allow God, because he sees you, to allow your focus to see him back, he brings a wholeness there. Just like my kids, when their daddy would come home, they would run to the door, they would wrap him, and they just cherish those times of playing outside or reading a book or or playing games they loved being in his presence god he's standing at the door and he's knocking and he wants to come in and he is inviting you to open your door to let down all the hurts and disappointments and to allow him to come in to sup with you to delight in fellowshipping with you, to commune with you. And in that place, we know this, that in his presence, there's fullness of joy, that where the glory is, where the spirit is, there's freedom, there's liberty. In his presence, he just brings a wholeness. You know, throughout the Gospels, it talks about, which is um, my next point, when lenses limit he talks about how that uh and it's one of my favorite stories in luke there's these two disciples and jesus has died he was buried and in their place of discouragement they're heading off they're walking to emmaus and and they're just so downtrodden that here comes they don't know it but here comes jesus and he walks along with them. And the Bible says that their eyes were blinded to the truth, that it was their Savior who had resurrected. But uh, though the uh, theologians agree that spiritually they were 
uh, blinded to the reality, but it, it could also have been enhanced by their discouragement and the fact that they were downtrodden. But in that conversation, as they talked with their Savior, not knowing it was Him, Jesus revealed the truth. He explained to them why Jesus had to come, how he was the fulfillment of the Old Testament, and that there was a reason why his death and had to take place. And as they had arrived at their destination, it was roughly seven miles, he, Jesus, was looking like he was heading on, and they invited him to come and stay and sup with them. And as he breaks the bread, it said their eyes were open, and, and Jesus just disappeared at that moment. I love how Luke describes over and over again, when you read those passages, all these scriptures that talk about seeing, about um, looking, about their sight, and how when they describe their time with Jesus, how their heart was just stirred and, and joy was there. There is something that happens when we allow those moments, those opportunities. God is sending them people, maybe a word, a message like tonight, or, or it might be a, a message from church, wherever it might be. But he's sending labors across your path so that you can, just like that scripture I, I shared just a moment ago, so that you can know the truth that God has by the power of his Holy Spirit. He wants to reveal those truths to you. So here they were. Often uh, in Jesus' day, they did not perceive who he was. It said, and I was reading uh, this weekend, all they could think about, they, they were amazed by the authority and the insight that he had as he was sharing in the synagogue. But they just kept thinking, but isn't he a carpenter? Isn't he Mary's son and, and mentioned his, his, his family? And it says that not much happened because they limited the very work that God wanted to do. And so uh, my next point, point four, beams blind. Sometimes God wants to do great things for us. God wants to awaken and reveal. It said they couldn't, not much happened. Jesus couldn't do much because all they could think about was their limited perspective, the beam that was um, limiting their eyesight. But those who believe, those who trusted, all kinds of miracles occurred and happened. I love how Jesus was very tuned in to the surroundings, the people, and you know, where this one, and I enjoy it, particularly as we're focusing on that 2020 spiritual vision, but um, we read about how the blind see. And this one uh, young individual that was healed, you know, his parents were called in to explain, was he born at birth with this blindness? And the parents uh, said, yes, but I, I don't know how he was healed. And even the, the young man himself couldn't really describe uh, in detail. And he was discouraged. And what does Jesus do? He, he hunts him down and finds him to bring encouragement, to, to celebrate him. God is there for you. He's wanting to celebrate your life. He's wanting to uh, bring beauty for ashes and, and to heal the brokenhearted. He wants to set the captives free. And it begins with you because you are the ones that have been seen and chosen. And he is sending you out to all your neighborhoods, your communities to bring that message, that good news to others. So as we look at beams that are blind, we are reminded how Jesus often could see that one person. How about the widow woman who in name, who lost her son, her only son. And Jesus, he's walking in, 
He sees the situation. He understands. You know, the definition of, of being seen is, is being able to understand, to perceive the greater depth of the truth. Jesus saw it all. And he stopped that caravan and he spoke to that, that son and told him to get up. And he did. That son rose from the dead. Or how about Zacchaeus? Here he is up on this tree because he's so short of stature. But Jesus said, I'm, I'm going to your house tonight. Or how about the disabled man who was at the pool of Bethesda? I remember visiting that when I was in Israel. And in that place, Jesus saw him. And even though he was discouraged because, you know, as he was having this conversation with Jesus, all he could focus on was that he didn't have anyone that could help carry him into the pool when it would ripple and when the miracles would awaken and stir. And yet the miracle holder, the one who with God all things are possible, was right there in his midst who could just shift in a moment. And Jesus did shift in a moment. And that man who had been, you know, for years with this uh, infliction, got his mat, got up, and began walking. Tonight, some of you have had burdens that have just driven you to such a place that you just can barely move. It might be the hopelessness or the fear, whatever it might be. But God is telling you to rise up. I am here, and in a suddenly, all things are possible. I can bring things to a place where I will show a way of escape or a provision that doesn't seem possible, but I have declared I will meet all your needs. I will open up doors that no man can shut, and I will show you the way. He is instructing us in the way, a way that we're in this world, but a reminder that we're not of it. That we have a God that's not limited. And I love how it was with the <laughs> disciples. Here they are on the side of the, the hill. And as a way of challenge, he asked, well, how are we going to feed these people? He knew how he was going to feed them, but he was looking for faith. He was looking, looking to see. Who would believe? And in that place, Andrew said, well, there's some fish and barley loaves. And Jesus said, bring them to, to me. Have the people sit down. And he broke, blessed, and fed all those people with plenty left over. God is reminding me in these last days, he's looking to see who would believe. Because those who believe what so things, whatever you desire, when you believe that you will receive them, you will have them. They are yours. Mark eleven twenty four. But blind, as I mentioned, sometimes it's just not being able to see. And Jesus, he said he makes the blind to see. It might not always be a physical we're talking about here. It's a spiritual insight of realizing who we are and understanding that, that truth we have been sent forth to give to others. Psalms 139 reminds me that even though, as it says in Matthew 7, we might be so focused on the splinter in others, and yet we have a beam in our eyes. I love this prayer, and I have it on one of my plaques here in the house which is Psalms 139, 23, 24, that declares, Search my heart, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my concerns. See if there's any offensive ways in me. Lead me in the way everlasting. God is wanting us to not focus on everyone else and their needs, but to focus on us. And to allow him to do the stirring and awakening. And what does he want us to do for other people? My point number five. Jesus saw through the lens of, comp of compassion. He was not only moved in the emotion of compassion, 
but compassion moves to action. You know, if you were to look up compassion in the Greek, it uh, is similar to the, the very innermost beings, you know, the bowels, uh, just right there. But maybe in today's uh, kind of description, we would say the very core of our being, you know, to the very inside, very depth of who we are. But that compassion, when we allow God to open up our eyes that we can see, that we have searched, had him search our hearts, and he has just brought all the blinders, the hurts, when he has brought us to a place of wholeness and completeness that only his spirit can do, but his spirit will do for us. What happens, we are then sensitive. We are within that place of allowing him to move in compassion for other people, to see not just the outward, but to see beyond that the needs, the desires, the possibilities. And in that place, Jesus would, as it uh, says in uh, Matthew and, and also in Mark, it says that through the lens of compassion, he expressed action of compassion. It might have said that he wept, right? But then soon after, his friend Lazarus, he told him to come out of that tomb, and Lazarus rose to life again. Our words speak life, but our words can speak death too. And God is wanting to challenge us as we have eyes to see, as we have eyes wide open, as we allow our hearts to, to just see through the lens of God, having our glasses on of sorts, God's glasses, to be able to see. He will give us the opportunity to go beyond the outward and look to the heart of that person. It might be calling out the potential. It might be calling a word. I love how Proverbs talks about how our words can bring healing. It can be uh, a, a word just fitly spoken, that it can bring wisdom and advice I love that our words can be fruit, but I want my, my words to be good fruit, to refresh and to restore and encourage. You know, there were times that Jesus uh, did get away. Some uh, in today's uh, vernacular, we would say that word of compassion, uh, fatigue, where we've just poured ourselves out over and over again, doing a good work, might be an outreach. Maybe we're parents, we have children, we're looking after an elderly family member. Whatever it might be, we can come to a place of fatigue. Even Jesus himself did. But he got away and he got to that place because Jesus was fully man and fully God. He got to that place and, and, and just, again, filled up in God's presence there is liberty, there's freedom, there's joy. And Jesus would fill up again. And over and over again, it would share that he would go to a quiet place. Tonight, I feel for those of you that are maybe experiencing compassion fatigue, there's so many opportunities to give. So many opportunities for those that are hurting. And God says, just come away with me. Allow just my presence to restore my presence to bring renewed hope, my presence to bring uh, a fresh prescription, clearing those the, the eyes so that you can truly see again. Because when you're in a place where, of just where he refreshes, where he kind of just cleanses our eyes, once again, with a heart that's deep and full, we have the compassion to reach out to this world because we are sent, right? We are seen, we are chosen, and we are sent forth. But we must go forth as he equips, as he empowers, because when we go on our own energy, we're gonna run dry and our effectiveness will not be complete. My last point for tonight is eyes wide open. He wants us to have eyes. You know, Ephesians talks about and encourages the church the Ephesian 
uh, Ephesus church, um, Paul saw that they, they needed a pep talk of sorts. So he starts out in verse 1 that, and says, well, you need to be imitators of God. And he goes down these verses and he gives them just a list of ways, that of uh, characteristics of how they can imitate God. But in, later on in, in verse 14, he talks about the importance of them to awake, right? To stay alert. And I think all of us, if we're not careful, we can get sleepy, right? We can we get worn out, worn down. And uh, God reminds all of us, even Jesus himself in the Gospels, when he was talking about the second coming, three times, right, just smacked away, he would say, be alert, stay active. In these days, God wants us to be alert. Where else have you seen that? Well, we've, we've seen that word alert as it relates to the armor of God, where it says in verse 18 to pray with all manner of prayer, that we're to be alert, right, in that. And then we're reminded how the enemy, he's, he's out there, right, roaring. You know, he's like this lion uh, seeking whom he can devour. But we're encouraged to be alert. So think about 1 Thessalonians 5, 6 that says, So then let us not sleep in spiritual indifference as the rest of the world does. But let us keep wide awake, alert, and cautious. Let us be sober, self-controlled, calm, and wise. God is calling us to wake up with eyes wide open to the world around us. Why? Because we are seen, we are chosen, and we are sent. I love you all. I thank you for joining us. It's going to be a great series. We just started, and there's so much more. So join us again next week. We've got a great topic, a great focus. But this week, think about not only looking, but seeing. Allowing God to point out just that one that you can bring that hope to. And then think about and pray about the virtual prayer walk that we're going to do to reach out to our communities to bathe those communities in prayer. We need prayer at such a time as this. And I'll look forward to seeing you very soon. God bless you all. Thanks for being with us tonight. Goodbye.